want to make a quick video here showing what I've been doing. I just finished this tonight, so I wanted to make a video about it and upload that since I haven't been active in a while. This is a picture frame, 100% mahogany, uh, with some pretty interesting joints on the end here that I want to show. So again, it's mahogany, three quarter of an inch thick, and about an inch and a half wide. These joints on the end, actually this is a better example, on top, they're butterfly key, right, they're keyed butterfly joints, but on the edge, as we can see here, it's a mitered half lap joint. So that mitered half lap allows for long grain gluing surface, but still a mitered face on the top. So you can see we've done that in every corner. And on all the ends, they're all mitered half laps. Now again, instead of just having the end grain gluing surface, we have also all this long grain coming through here. So this corner here is all glued underneath and then still keyed to hold that together. On the back, I've used just a toothed, toothed, I suppose, um, picture frame holder. So you put a nail in the wall and then the nail falls into one of these notches. The back has been rabbited. Now this has to be a stopped rabbit. As you can see here, here I went over a little bit with the table saw. But you can see it's a stopped rabbit. So on these pieces, it goes all the way through, but on this piece, I had to stop it. So I cut up with the table saw, and then I used a chisel to get this last bit. To hold the back in, which is plexiglass, paper, cardboard, and then uh, masonite, I just used four small brass screws. And then to keep it level when it's against the wall, because this hue has a thickness, there's a space hue, I used two very small screws on the ends to get that same thickness so that it's nice and flat when it sits up against the wall. Some things I did notice building this project were that mahogany does not glue very well. So mahogany is an oily hardwood and it won't glue very nicely. But it does look very nice when it's completed. But it is difficult to glue. It seems the glue joint just doesn't hold up very well and it's a very weak joint. So now to fill up the gaps that were created when doing this, because obviously I'm not a professional, I'm not perfect, there's going to be a couple small gaps. And so those gaps, what I did was I mixed up a mahogany wood putty. Now you mix up your own wood putty by taking the finest sawdust that you can find of that wood. So if you wanted to do pine, you'd find pine. If you wanted to do poplar, you find poplar, whatever. You take very fine sawdust and you mix it into a pile. You put a dimple in the middle of it and then you pour in just your regular old wood glue, whatever you have around. You put in some wood glue and then you mix that up. You just mix it up until it's a putty and then that's your wood putty. Then you just squeeze it into your joints and you're done. Um, generally I'll make more than I need because it was just some wood glue and sawdust. So you just mix up more than you need, squeeze it into the joint let it sit for like 20 minutes, a half hour, and then you can sand it off and it looks and stains just like the wood that you made the sawdust from. So I mixed up mahogany wood putty, squeezed it into any of the joints that there was spaces in, and that was that. So, now this joint is very strong. Now, just a mitered a joint with a butterfly key would have been pretty strong, but cutting that key with a chisel when this is just a mitre, uh, would have been too difficult because the mitre would have broken. So I had to use a mitered half lap in which this piece laps over this piece. So this piece here, these long pieces, are straight on the ends. They're, f they're straight, they're flat. And then this is cut halfway, halfway deep and all this is removed. This piece is angled, just like you see, angled like this. But there's a cut coming straight across and all that material is removed halfway. And then, they meet up on the end, just like this. Another cool aspect of mahogany is that the color will change as your perspective changes. So here it looks like this piece is lighter and this piece is darker, but when viewing it from the other angle, that changes. 
And so that also makes for a cool perspective so you can see here this looks Dodo, Doku, this looks Leidu, which makes for a cool perspective on those joints. So I think that this looks very nice. Didn't take me too long to do, but it did take me a while to get around to making this uh, this video. Excuse the dog, he probably hears me talking. But I'm happy with how this turned out. The joints are all pretty tight. What you do have to watch out for making uh, butterfly joints is that these corners inside, these inside corners, you'll notice this piece broke off, but I managed to squeeze it back in, is that those corners are very susceptible to breaking out. And that even on... I oh, can't pick that up. Even on my test pieces, where this is very big, I, that obviously didn't happen. A piece like this, again, this is very big. There isn't any breakout here just because of the size of that key. But when you're working in a space as small as this, where this is only an inch long, and this space in here is only about a quarter inch, getting a chisel inside of there and not catching on that corner was very difficult. So how I spaced this was that this here is three quarters of an inch, this is an inch, that's about an eighth inch inside. And I just beveled the inside as so, and then I took that three quarters of an inch up like this, over here, I think there was a little bit more than three quarters of an inch, but I tried to make this pretty centered. Uh, so this is probably five eighths to the center. This is going to be a little bit more. Uh, so that way, there was still enough space over here for this to be strong, and there was still enough space over here for this to be strong. Because if you push this too far over, there would be no wood here, and it would just chip off this whole corner. So there has to be enough space here, there has to be enough space inside of this. So if halfway, if this looks too small, move it up a little bit. So again, I'm talking about this space here. You need to have enough wood there for that to remain strong. Generally, a butterfly key like this is, will always be done out of hardwood, and it has to have that long grain, because this grain running through here gives it the strength, because this joint is being pulled on like this. Right? You can imagine the joint being pulled on. So that long grain gives it the strength to be pulled on, but not pulled apart. If you had the grain going the other way, it would snap in the middle. And if it was going diagonally, it would snap on that diagonal, but this long grain gives it the strength. So in a carcass joint, whereas this is a flame joint, in a carcass joint, let's say this was just a 45 degree angle, you could actually cut inside of you a dovetail shape, and then slide in a piece of wood cut to look like a dovetail. Now you're using end grain though, because now it's being pulled on inside the joint. So now the long grain is still working for the joint. But if you cut it the same way, and you could see end grain on these joints, now it would split right in the middle, right where the short grain is. So you do want to try and avoid that. Now I did this all out of mahogany, because I didn't want to really be able to see these dovetail joints. Now, you can see here that they're visible just because of the contrasting grain coming in, coming in, and going across, the contrast in grain makes it just visible enough that you notice it, but it's not like maple would be really stuck against the mahogany. I was going for a more simple look, so I didn't use a really strongly contrasting wood, but if you did want a stronger look, you could pull a half lap out here and then put a, a dowel in the middle or something, or you could even put these uh, pour out of the surface. You could use a different type of wood. Um, but I was going for a pretty simple look, so I didn't want all that contrast. I then finished it with an antique walnut uh, polyurethane stain finish, and then I used one coat of paste wax. And I think it looks quite good now. It's actually ready to be hung on the wall, and I think I'm going to go do that after this video is over. So again, interesting points. Make your own wood putty, fine sawdust, and glue. It's about a one-to-one -one mixture. Now this joint, some people would try and use a router. If it was a joint this big, then I might use a router. But in a joint this size, you need a very small router bit and you need to be very, very precise. So I wouldn't use a router bit, instead I use a chisel. You have to make a template for that. So generally speaking, I keep my templates over here. I don't have the template, actually I do have the template for that big one I made, but I still have the template for these small ones. So what I did was I made a small piece, 
key, this key is the same size as this key, as you can see, same size, and I use this to muck out the actual wood I'd be cutting, so if I'm cutting it out of this material, I'd use this key, put it down here, I'd tap these nails down, and then I could trace around it without it moving, and I'd pop it back up, and I'd cut this out. Whether you're cutting that out with a bandsaw, a handsaw, uh, you know, whatever you're using, I'd then cut that out. Uh, but that is the, the template I use. So I muck in about the centers, I put these little nails, and then you can tap those down. It's not going to move. Muck around it with a knife. Cut those out. And then to do this, you don't use the template. You put your key down, you muck around your key, and then you number it. One, one. Now that slot is fit to that key. And when you fit them, they should fit perfectly. Now on a small scale like this, it's difficult to get a very tight fit. But you should be able to do just fine. Like these joints are actually pretty tight, as you can see. Now it's just, you know, you don't want really big gaps. Um, and especially if you're using the wrong putty. So if the putty isn't going to stain, or if the putty doesn't match, it's going to stand out. So that's why you really want to mix your own wood putty. Uh, but that's that. I'm going to call this a day. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.